Now, next one is the working as a opposite that of the pump. Yes. So, how it works? Unbalanced vane motor. Fluid is pressurized. Fluid is taken given from this inlet port. Now, this pressurized fluid is available here. So, how it is working? This pressure is exerted on the vanes. Yes. And these vanes are pushed. Okay, so it is trying to rotate in a clockwise direction. Yes. And from this port, this fluid is taken out. When this fluid, the gap between the outer casing and the rotor decreases, then these vanes are pushed inside the uh, rotary block, this rotor block, by compressing the spring which is available below the vanes. Yes, so these are going inside. Now here you can see of oh, total vane is gone inside the rotor block. Yes, and as the this gap increases, the spring is pushing the vanes outside and it is having continuous touch with the cylinder block. Okay, and so there is no gap between the cylinder block and the this uh, rotor block. Okay, so all the gap is filled with the this vein and when pressure is applied, that pressure is moving the vein in the clockwise direction. If the supply is given from the other end, then it is going to rotate in the opposite direction. So here it is going to rotate in the opposite direction. So we are getting again continuous type either clockwise or anti-clockwise depending upon from which side supply is given depending upon that we are going to get the rotation of a unbalanced type of a vein motor. This is the balanced type of a vein motor. In a balanced type of a vein motor here it is not eccentric. We can say previous type, unbalanced type, it is eccentric. The uh, center of a cylinder block, it is going to be somewhere here. Yes, and center of the rotor block, it is here. So, the, there is an eccentricity for the rotation of a, a rotor block in an unbalanced vane motor. But in case of a balanced type, we are not having any type of a eccentricity. Okay, so here both the elliptical shape is given. Because of this elliptical shape, there is a larger void and the smaller voids are created. So, if I am giving the fluid, pressurized fluid, then it is filling the gap. Okay, so if this gap is filled, then pressurized fluid is exerting the force on the vein and it is trying to rotate the vein and thus the this rotor block and we are taking the output from this uh, shaft of the rotor block. Yes, here two inlet and two outlet construction is there to make the balanced vein motor. Yes, so here whatever the fluid which is given here it is taken out from this outlet and from whatever the fluid which is given from this inlet it is taken from this outlet. So, we are again having a continuous rotation and this one is the balanced vane motor because vanes are in a balanced condition. Center of this elliptical section and center of the rotor block is same. Okay, So, this is the working of a balanced vane motor. Okay, Next one is the straight axial piston motor. Now, how it works? Now, again, this is opposite to the straight axial piston pump. So, how it works? When I give the pressurized fluid to this inlet port, then what will happen? This pressure is trying to push this piston inside. Okay. So, here it is trying to push the piston on this side. So, this plate, okay. So, this swash plate is rotating Yes, either in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction depending upon the construction. So, once this starts rotating, this 
shaft is connected to the cylinder block. Yes, the cylinder block also starts rotating and we are getting the rotary motion at the output. Yes, and where the volume is a larger one, from that location, their pressure is decreased and decreased pressure is taken out from the outlet port. Yes, so we have discussed that generally even number of ports are present in a straight axial piston motor. Yes, so even number, half the ports are having a inlet stroke and the half ports are having a outlet stroke. So this is the working of a straight axial piston motor. From the inlet port, we are giving the pressurized fluid. From the outlet port, we are getting the less pressure fluid as an outlet and that is given to the tank. Okay, so this is the straight axial piston motor. Next one is the bent axis. Now, in some application, it is we are unable to use the straight axis. So, in that application, we go for the bent axis piston motor. Here, we are again, same kind of working is there, only that one universal joint is provided for the bent axis, as a bent axis. Okay, so it is now connected to a cylinder block. Uh, we, are, we need to have a mechanical motion at this end. So, we are providing the pressurized fluid. Yes, you can call this as an inlet and you can call this as an outlet. Yes, we are providing the uh, pressurized fluid. Because of this pressurized fluid, this piston try to move inside. Okay, so we are getting the rotary motion of this cylinder block, thus the universal joint and as the universal joint is connected to the output shaft, we are getting the motion at the output. This circular motion as an output. Continuous circular motion is taken, yes, in a bend axis piston motor. Now next. Stationary cylinder radial piston motor. Here a number of piston and cylinder arrangement is there and these are connected to the crank. Yes, and we are connecting the connecting rod eccentric to the shaft. Yes, here output shaft is available here. Yes, this is the output shaft. We are taking as the output mechanical motion from this shaft. Yes, so eccentrically it is connected. Pressurized the fluid is given to this cylinder and that is moving the piston. It is having a to and pro motion of a piston. When piston is moving inside, then it is a pushing the crank. Yes, to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. Yes, and synchronization is done for the all the cylinder so as to get the continuous circular motion as a output of a uh, this output from this stationary cylinder radial piston motor. Now last one, uh, I am taking this uh, just uh, just it kind of it is a kind of a revision. So I am a bit quick in while explaining this working of this stationary uh, all type of a motor. Rotary rotating cylinder type of a radial piston motor. Last type of a pump and its inverse is the rotating cylinder type of a radial piston motor. Yes, here what is what we are doing? We are providing the pressurized fluid. We are providing the pressurized fluid in the inlet port. Okay, so this pressurized fluid is pushing the piston outside. Now, there is a number of pistons are there. So, this pressurized fluid is pushing the piston outside. So, the gap increases and meanwhile, we are getting the cylinder block rotation. Okay, so we are getting the rotation of a cylinder block. Okay, and when the gap is decreasing, then at that time, we are, uh, this fluid is accumulated inside the outlet port and it is given outside 
to the tank. Okay, so this is the working of a rotating cylinder type of a radial piston motor. Okay, so we will stop here.